80 points in the paint, obviously problematic. Um, is that more of a function of problems on the perimeter or, or the rim protection? Well, I mean, we also got like Valanciunas just destroyed us when we got the ball down there, right? Especially off all those offensive rebounds. And they came in a string where even though he ended with 16 points, it felt a lot bigger than that um, because it, it felt like he was getting what he wanted to off the glass. They got several rebounds as we were trying to wrestle with him. Their guards crashed in there and got several rebounds. And those were huge plays. Obviously, um, some of the drives, some of uh, Jaws' ability to box out in the pick and roll and keep a guy on his hip puts you in a little bit of a predicament. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought that that was the difference in the game, clearly. Um, their baskets were um, very physical, very like, you know, you, you could feel those runs and didn't feel like there was much to stop it. Um, that said, I thought our guys competed. Um, if we're going to be, you know, what we've been in the past, right? Um, we've talked about this a lot, but I think, if you know, when you're missing guys like Jason and Kimba, you have to win with a, a better defense, right? And I think that that's what we've been able to do in the past, and we, we don't – we haven't played that this year. Um, you know, part of it is, you know, they presented some real challenges for us. But I thought our guys competed. I thought our guys stayed in the game. I thought they played with great boys at the end of regulation. And then, you know, we didn't – I did not think we, were, we played as well um, in overtime. Gary Washburn. Hey Brad, defensively in the second and third quarters, what do you what did you see happening? You guys got off to such a good start, and then suddenly they couldn't miss in the second and third quarters, and it seemed like you kind of lost control from there. Yeah, we were late on the wrong guys first and foremost. I mean, Allen and Bain both got great looks um, in that first half run after we were playing really well, uh, and then I thought we overran um, some of the other guys at times. Uh, and that allowed, that led to some of the pain points, some of the offensive rebounds. But, um, yeah, there was a point in time, you know, in the second and third where we just stops were not, we weren't getting it. I mean, they went on, you know, seven out of eight or eight out of nine possessions in their scoring. And even when they're not, they're right at the rim. And so that's an issue, been an issue all year. And um, I did think that we had moments where we were, um, really good in there and, and really physical. I thought, um, you know, Shemi's defensive rebounding, it felt different with him in there, the way that he was defensive rebounding. I thought that um, Smart to standing in there and taking a couple charges is a big deal when a team is just pounding you in the paint, pounding you in the paint. Um, but we didn't do it enough. Um, and they got, you know, we're 132, even in overtime, that's a lot. Brad, what was the situation with Tatum? Yeah, he did not feel good when he got to the gym. Um, he was complaining of some dizziness. He went out and shot. We he wanted to go through and try to shoot. This uh, is a game where he usually, you know, he's obviously one of the nearby cities or one of the closer cities, I guess, to St. Louis. So his grandma was here and, like, you know, he, had, he really obviously wanted to play, but. Um, didn't feel great afterwards either, and it was, you know, so we, you know, decided to not play him. And so I hope it's nothing big. Uh, doesn't sound, I mean, he's been testing every day, uh, all that stuff. Um, so I would, I would guess it's just general illness. I hope he's back soon. John Krause. Brad, um, Without your, two, you know, two of your best scorers, you still put up 26, 126 points and had 31 assists. Um, the ball movement in this game, I think, out of necessity, um, how do you carry that over into when you do have Kemba and Jason while still using what their strengths are? We talked about that the other day with all those guys, and I think you saw that more in the Orlando game. I think that this was probably more of a carryover from the last couple of days, John, than it is necessarily, you know, out of necessity per se. Although, um, you know, I do think you, know, you can point to a couple of our worst games of the year and go back to the last five or six minutes and some of our bench was playing great basketball. And so 
Um, doesn't mean they're always able to necessarily generate the, the best shot or, or um, you know, obviously those guys are still growing and learning, but like, that's the way we want to play. And uh, that's our best chance of utilizing you know, our team to its fullest. Uh, and it allows you again, kind of like the defensive stuff to be in a game like this, you know, where, um, you know, where you're shorthanded. Bob, Sean. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, Coach, you've talked about it a lot, but despite the loss, does this type of resilience, is it important to keep that as a carryover as you go on this trip and yeah. a big picture type of thing? No, well, I mean, I think the last, last two nights have been a lot more like Celtics basketball. Yeah. So I'm disappointed we didn't play better in overtime. I thought they, again, they got, I thought the, the ball stopped a little bit more in overtime and I thought it was, um, you know, maybe that was due to legs and, you know, all that stuff. Cause those guys were all playing a little heavier than minutes than usual, but they were battling and, you know, and they were, we made a lot of tough plays. We made a lot of plays to give ourselves a chance. The last 30, 40, 45 seconds of the game in regulation, that was like good poise stuff. And so we can build off the last two nights and we've got to, um, this is disappointing, but it's also like it's more who we want to look like at least. We'll wrap it up right there. Thanks. Thanks.